Now, the next Super Chat question I had was about John Lennon, Jane Fonda, and the radicalization of, uh, of, and the radicalization of celebrities in the 1960s and 70s. Well, um, first of all, you have to remember that, you know, in the 1960s, you had the anti-Vietnam War movement, you had the civil rights movement, and you had a, a huge amount of interest in communism among, you know, among, among younger people. And it was very much tied in with popular culture, you know, the rock and roll music and such. And so, yeah, you had a, a rise of interest in communism, um, you know, uh, and John Lennon and Jane Fonda were very different in their radicalization. Now, John Lennon was from the Beatles, right? He was the Beatles music. Um, and, you know, around the time that the Beatles broke up, John Lennon became very friendly with Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin, and he was in kind of a radical phase. And he gave an interview to The Red Mole, which was a Trotskyite new left newspaper uh, edited by Tariq Ali. Um, and he basically came out as a Trotskyist. Uh, John Lennon was basically saying he was a Trotskyite. Um, he gave money to the Black Panther Party, um, and he didn't like Maoists. Um, and in one of his songs, he had that line, if you go carrying pictures of Chairman Mao, you ain't going to make it with anyone anyhow. Um, and he, in this interview, you can read the interview. It's on the internet. Uh, Tariq Ali uh, was kind of a new left Trotskyite, interviewed John Lennon. And John Lennon, um, apparently, you know, in the interview, he says, look, I don't like Maoism, but I'm a Trotskyite. Um, and it was part of, you know, he's more of a Trotskyite because he was from a working class town. He's from Liverpool, had a working class background. He was against the war. Uh, he was against racism, sympathized with the, with the anti-racist struggles around the world. That was the hip, cool thing to do at that point. You have to remember all the cool kids were going to rallies and stuff. Um, so, you know, John Lennon, you know... It wasn't a big thing, right? And a lot of people, there's kind of the cult of John Lennon, that John Lennon was just so amazing. And you no, know, for for a couple years, for a couple years, we're talking 1968, 1969, 1970, 1971, 72, 73, 74, John Lennon was hanging out in radical circles. Um, and, uh, you know, there was, there's, there's a whole documentary, uh, The United States versus John Lennon, that talks about how John Lennon, uh, you know, almost lost his, his visa to the United States. The Nixon administration uh, very much uh, tried to take his visa away um, and tried to prevent him from being in the United States because he was associated with the radical movements. Um, and that I believe, if I'm not mistaken, John Lennon was planning to play at the protests against the Republican Convention. Uh, in 1972, Nixon was running for re-election, um, and there was going to be protests against the Republican National Convention. John Lennon was planning to play at those protests, and in agreement, in exchange for getting his visa to stay in the United States, and he agreed not to play at the protests, um, and so he got his visa, if I'm not mistaken. Um, John Lennon was also revealed to have given quite a bit of money to the Workers' Revolutionary Party which is a very interesting Trotskyite sect in Britain, uh, led by Jerry Healy. Um, the, the Healyites, they were called. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, Jerry Healy was this very large, uh, very large man, uh, you know, who was a Trotskyite in Britain. You can watch video of him. And if Lenin had to go into hiding three months between July and October, in the Soviet Union, before the October 1917 revolution, it was because another leaders of the Bolshevik party had to go into hiding. It was because the enemy always strikes at the leadership. He always hits out at the leadership. Therefore, we must say that what is going on in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank is a social revolution not just an armed confrontation with naked fists and stones and everything else. And the Zionists know that. That is why they had to kill Abudia. Who else was in on this? Um, and he had a group called the Workers' Revolutionary Party, and they were very good at courting celebrities. Um, the actress Vanessa Redgrave, uh, Vanessa Redgrave was a very famous actress. She's still very famous. I think she's in movies still now. Um, very famous actress. She joined the Workers' Revolutionary Party, and they were a Trotskyite group. What's interesting is the Workers' Revolutionary Party of the United Kingdom was pro-Gaddafi. They supported Gaddafi, 
They supported uh, the Iraqi Ba'ath Socialist Party and Saddam Hussein, and they supported, you know, Hafez Assad and the Syrian government. Most Trotskyites didn't, and they took this kind of unique position of saying, they, they said that Iraq and Libya and Syria were deformed workers states, and they were pro-Palestine. They were very pro-Palestine. They were very anti-Israel. And Vanessa Redgrave made a documentary about Palestine uh, that Gaddafi like paid for, basically. Um, and they screened it all over the world. And so Vanessa Redgrave, who was part of this Workers' Revolutionary Party, uh, they went around the world screening this documentary about the Palestinians that had been, you know, financed by Gaddafi. Um, and so, you know, the fact that they were supporting Gaddafi and they were supporting the anti-imperialist states in the Middle East, and they would talk about Palestine, when you have to remember, back Back then, you didn't talk about Palestine. It wasn't okay to start criticizing Israel and talking about Palestine in anti-war protests really until the 80s, right? Um, all throughout the 1960s and 70s, because there was so much support for Israel among leftists, you didn't, at, at big anti-war rallies in DC, Palestine was never discussed. Um, you know, and in fact, the first national anti-war protest to have a pro-Palestine speaker was in 1981. It was the People's Anti-War Mobilization of 1981. It was the first, you know, national rally, uh, you know, that was against the, against war that had a Palestinian speaker. All throughout the Vietnam War, there'd be huge marches of hundreds of thousands of people that would march against the Vietnam War. There would be not be any talk of Palestine. Palestine was taboo. So I will give kudos to the Workers' Revolutionary Party of Britain, as much as I don't agree with Trotskyism, as much as they were a very strange group. Um, you know, John Lennon gave them money. And they did talk about Palestine, and that's respectable. That's very, very respectable, right? Um, but yeah, it was a strange Trotskyite group. John Lennon never joined them, but he wrote him a, some big checks, um, and he was persuaded to, to finance them to some degree or other. The Workers' Revolutionary Party, this pro-Gaddafi, pro-Assad, pro-Saddam Hussein, pro-Palestinian Trotskyite group in Britain, the Workers' Revolutionary Party. Now, um, Vanessa Redgrave was probably the actress that was the celebrity that they were most famous for associating with. But yeah, John Lennon uh, gave them some money. He also gave some money to the Black Panthers. But really, after about 1974, John Lennon's not really talking political stuff. Uh, you know, John Lennon's radicalism was a phase, okay? And the same for Jane Fonda. Again, it was a phase. It was popular at the time. Being a communist in the late 60s and early 70s was very, very trendy. And so they did it. It was the trendy, hip, cool thing to do. Um, and John Lennon was this hip, cool rock musician. He was a Beatle. And so, you know, it was the hip, cool thing to do. So he did it. Um, and it's not that surprising. And he played at anti-war rallies. There's one album by John Lennon. It's called Sometime in New York City. And almost every song on the album is a political song. Um, and honestly, it's not his best writing. Um you know, um, the title track, uh, Woman is the N-Word of the World, that's a little insensitive, isn't it? I mean, it's, didn't, he didn't say N-Word, okay? The title track has the N-Word in it, and it's supposed to be about women's rights, uh, but the line is, Woman is the N-Word of the World. That's not, that's a little cringe. Nowadays, people would be smart enough not to, you know, no leftist would record a song with the N-Word in the title, okay? Um, but that was, you know, and, but there's a song on that album for Angela Davis called Angela... Uh, there's a song on the album about Attica, Attica State, you know, um, you know, and there's, you know, there's, there's a song supporting the IRA and the Irish liberation struggle. That's his most explicitly political album is called Sometime in New York City. And I believe it's, it's a 1971, 72. That's John Lennon. Jane Fonda is a different story, considered to be one of the most beautiful female stars in the 19, late 1960s. Um, and she turned against the Vietnam War. One of the most amazing things that Jane Fonda did was that she started uh, playing shows for GIs, for guys, to, you know, trying to encourage, you know, U.S. Army soldiers to quit the military. That is huge, okay? You want to talk about risky behavior. It's one thing to go to an anti-war anti protest, but if you are, and she was, going around the world, going around the world to U.S. military bases in Okinawa and in the Pacific and near U.S. military bases, putting on a show, urging, urging U.S. soldiers not to fight in the Vietnam War. That is huge. Okay? And the amount of risk that she took in order to do that is very, very admirable. 
You want to talk about, and there's this whole thing. I grew up hearing about, oh, you know, the Vietnam vets, they ain't Fonda Jane and Hanoi Jane. Okay, this woman went around the world performing a TV, a show called FTA. It stood for F the Army urging U.S. soldiers not to fight in Vietnam. And many, many didn't fight in Vietnam because of Jane Fonda's work. That's huge. And Richard Nixon, you know, very much wanted to put her in prison for it. And the FBI was all over her. That is a contribution. Again, I can recognize now later, I don't agree with a lot of what Jane Fonda says now, you know, but again, I can recognize that is huge respect points for me. Okay. I mean, to have a Hollywood celebrity, consider she was like, you know, the most beautiful woman, the, you know, and to have her going around urging U.S. soldiers not to fight in Vietnam is, that is such a huge contribution um, that she did that, okay? You, everything else, everything that's come since then, she's disappointed me. I don't agree with a lot of what she puts out now, but that was huge, Okay. That was huge. And, um, you know, I mean, what she did with that FTA roadshow was utterly amazing. And, you know, people, they make it out like she hated the soldiers or something. No, she actually, you know, she made a big point of trying to win the soldiers not to fight in the war. Now, she went to Vietnam and she supported the Vietnamese people. She said the people of Vietnam are right to fight for their national liberation and the U.S. imperialists are wrong. That people used to chant at anti-war rallies back in the day. They used to chant, one side's right, one side's wrong, victory to the Viet Cong. You know, and that's basically what she was saying. The Vietnamese people had the right to fight for their national liberation as a country. There's nothing wrong with her saying that. She was absolutely right to say that. Now, she's apologized for a photo that she took with an anti-aircraft gun, right? They Vietnam, they had these anti-aircraft guns they would use to shoot down the Americans who were bombing them and killed millions of people. And she did like a sexy photograph with an anti-aircraft gun. She's apologized for that. She says that wasn't the right thing to do. And honestly, you know, I understand why she apologized for that, right? I mean, look, as much as, you know, the Vietnamese people had every right to defend their homeland from people bombing them and millions of people were killed by those bombs from the United States. So the Vietnamese people getting anti-aircraft guns and shooting down American aircraft. I mean, what would, what would you do if someone was bombing this country? I mean, come on, right? I mean, the Vietnamese people had the right to defend themselves. I can understand why, as an American, it would be a mistake to, you know, to pose with a weapon that's killing other Americans, right? It wasn't a smart decision. And she's apologized for that. And I think she's right, right? If I, you know, I've been to many countries around the world, right? I've been to many countries that are not friendly with the United States. I wouldn't pose for a photograph with weapons that killed other Americans. I love other Americans. I don't want other Americans to be bombing people in other countries. I don't want other Americans to be, you know, engaging in war crimes. But I don't, I, I would never pose with photographs of implements used to kill other Americans, right? You know, that's not how communists should represent ourselves. We love our country. Um, you know, we love our people. We, we don't want our people to be hurt. We don't want Americans to be sent to unjust wars to die. So I understand, and I think she's right to apologize. That was not right uh, for her to, you know, it wasn't, wasn't correct for her to, you know, pose with that anti-aircraft gun. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad she's apologized for doing that. Uh, it was probably, it was a mistake. Look, she was very, feeling very angry about the bombing of the v people of Vietnam. Millions of people died from the U.S. bombing. And she was feeling very, very angry about it and felt like the, you know, the Americans who were bombing Vietnam, you know, should be shot down. And she posed for that picture. Well, I, you know, now she regrets it and she's right to regret it. Um, that said, though, what's interesting is Jane Fonda, it's pretty clear she was hanging out with Maoists in, in the early 70s. If you listen to her interviews, uh, she was hanging out with like the Revolutionary Union, uh, which was a precursor to the Revolutionary Communist Party. Uh, which was very heavily involved with Vietnam Veterans Against the War, VVAW. And she was hanging out with the, the Bay Area Revolutionary Union, you know, what's now the Revolutionary Communist Party. The, you know, the, but they were much bigger then and much more broad. It was the California Maoists. That's kind of who she was hanging out with. Um, she made a movie with John luc Godard, who was a Maoist filmmaker from that time. Uh, she made a very good movie about workers in a French sausage factory uh, who go on strike and, and seize their factory. It's a very good movie called Tu Va Bien. I recommend it. It's one of my favorite movies. It's about 
uh, you know, workers in, in Paris on strike. And it's about kind of processing the May of 1968 events and what it really meant for France, et cetera. So I recommend that. Unfortunately, um, Jane Fonda, um, you know, she married Tom Hayden. Tom Hayden was a leader of Students for a Democratic Society. She married him, and in 1982, when Israel invaded Lebanon, she supported Israel. Um, and she went around, you know, on a tour, a speaking tour, urging leftists not to protest against Israel. That was wrong. Uh, she's dead wrong about Israel. She's pro-Israel now. I'm not pro-Israel, um, you know, and... Uh, She's pro-Israel. And now, basically now she's turned in, she's not, I wouldn't call Jane Fonda a socialist now. I mean, in the early, early 70s, she was hanging out with Maoists. She was going to Vietnam. She, she did amazing work against the Vietnam War. I would call her just kind of a liberal now. Um, you know, she's just kind of a liberal feminist now. Um, you know, and that's, that's who she is now. Um, you know, but for a period she was, you know, she was, uh, you know, again, you know, in that period when it was very cool and hip to be an anti-war protester, that's what she did. Um, and uh, that was good, um, you know, um, and uh, there you go. I mean, it's, you know, people change and they evolve over time. So for a few minutes, she was a, a communist and then she wasn't. Um, you know, um, while I, one thing that's kind of overlooked uh, is that she and the actress I mentioned before, who was from the Workers' Revolutionary Party, Vanessa Redgrave, May, they made a very good movie uh, in the 19, uh, late 1970s called Julia. And it's about uh, a rich girl who joins the anti-Nazi resistance. And it's like a fictionalized account of the life of Lillian Hellman. That's a very good movie. Watch Julia. It's a great movie from the 1970s. Um, and Jane Fonda stars in it along with Vanessa Redgrave. Great movie. Just a really beautiful movie. It's very sad. Um, but it's about a rich, rich girl who becomes a, a communist anti-Nazi resistance activist. Um, it's a very good movie. Um, it's very beautiful. And I would check out that movie if you get a chance. Um, and, you know, uh, Jane Fonda, you know, and Vanessa Redgrave made that, that movie. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Um, so, and, you know, Vanessa Redgrave was a Trotskyite. Jane Fonda was kind of a Maoist and, you know, whatever. I mean, that's, that's history. But again, you know, I'm talking about this because it's important. John Lennon and Jane Fonda both went through a phase of being communists, right? Um, and then they stopped when the culture changed, when society changed. And the thing is, that's good. I'm glad they made their contribution. I would say Jane Fonda's contribution was much bigger than John Lennon's. Um, but at the end of the day, I, don't get your politics from celebrities, right? J Jane Fonda became famous by being an actress. Uh, John Lennon became famous by being a rock musician. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, don't get your politics from people, get your politics from politicians. You know, when you go to the doctor, you don't, you don't want an, a famous actor to, to treat your illness, right? You want a very good doctor to treat your illness, right? Uh, you know, uh, if your teeth are, are broken or you, you need, you know, dental care, you go see a dentist. Uh, you don't see, you know, a famous singer, you go see a dentist, right? So don't get your politics from celebrities, right? I'm glad celebrities can take a good political stance, but you know, if your, your teeth are hurting, you go see a dentist. If you're, you know, if you need surgery, you go see a surgeon. Don't get your politics from celebrities. That's, that's what I'm saying. 